Happy Thursday, hot news, everybody. Welcome to Cyberpunk Day. That's the big news that's going on today. Are you enjoying it? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, also check out the timestamps for all the things we talk about because we got some good stuff, including the fact that AMD is apparently discontinuing their reference cards, or are they? Then we have Intel's first data center card, as well as some really, really big news concerning Facebook and a massive lawsuit filed by the US government. So we'll get into that after we talk about today's video sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Chirp and more specifically, their wheel plus this little ring looking doodad is perfect for making sure that you stretch your back in the way that you need it helps to alleviate lower back pain upper back pain neck pain all of that because with its innovative design and its spinal canal it'll keep your spine safe from unwanted pressure and allow you to actually stretch your back in a way that feels good and appropriate it comes in three different sizes you have the gentle the medium and the deep tissue the chirp wheel plus is definitely my go-to product for relieving my back pressure as well as stretching before and after exercises. My wife loves it too. So check it out at the link in the video description if you're interested. So let's jump on into the AMD information. There were some rumors floating around and by rumors, I mean it was confirmed by two different websites that AMD was canceling the reference designs on the RX 6800, 6800 XT and 6900 XT and that it was over. You would not be able to get them anymore besides the ones that AMD had produced, which just meant up until early 2021 until the report came out and everybody was like, oh no, why would you get rid of it? We like it so much. And then AMD Scott Herkelman came out and said, uh, we've officially extended the reference design builds indefinitely due to popular demand. Thanks for the feedback. Turns out that you guys can change things through Twitter outrage, apparently. Still can't change them launching stuff in Fortnite, though. Now, this is the only little bit of cyberpunk news I'm going to include in this episode because I'm sure your news feeds are swamped with it. But there was Cyberpunk's 2077 spotted running on a Ryzen 5 4500U kind of switch PC type hybrid that's going on here. The 4500U is one of my favorite chips that's come out this year. Six cores, 12 threads with the Vega integrated GPU, and it could run it at around 25 to 35 FPS on this portable little device. And it was running at 1280 by 800 just to give you an indication of how how graphically demanding this game is. And it, okay, I lied. I, NVIDIA put out some benchmarks of their official stuff. The RTX 3090 can only get 4K ray tracing ultra settings. I think it was like 22 FPS and you have to turn DLSS on to get like 50. It's awful. This game is just, it's next level. It's next gen. Ah, imagine next gen games are coming out when the next gen consoles launched. And Intel's revealing their next gen project, their Project Z high performance accelerator card. Raja Kadori tweeting this out himself. It's their first data center GPU that is in production with him saying that AMD and Nvidia have changed the game. So we're just going to continue to try to make something that's also really good. But you don't want that. You don't want some weird Intel GPU that's meant for the data center. You want this ASRock's M.2 two slot graphics card. Yeah, slots right in. It has PCI Express 3.0 by one support, 16 megabytes of DDR1 RAM, which is just awesome, as well as a two pin 12 volt power from Molex. Look at this. This is essentially supposed to be in servers where you just need a single VGA out. This is not supposed to run any sort of game, but it's neat. It's a neat concept of utilizing the PCI Express slots through the M.2 form factor. I would like to see more of these come out. Maybe that would be the successor to the GT 1030. It's just something like this. I, I do it, NVIDIA. And Seagate's doing it. They are making their own cores with Risk Five for power data mobility and trustworthiness. This is because they need cores on their hard drives in order to continue to increase the capacity with data management and all of that with the Seagate saying that they shipped over a billion processing cores last year in their hard drives. So now they're gonna work with Risk Five to produce their own instead of relying on other companies in order to make that happen. And Corsair is relying on other companies. I don't know if it's so much reliance, but it just happened to reveal their 5,000D and 5,000D D airflow cases. A Romanian retailer put out these listings of the cases and you can check them out here. It's essentially the 4000 D but better. Which is what I would say about this next article. Mushkin's launching the eight terabyte NVMe Alpha Series SSD, three gigabytes per second read and write on all of that. It's basically a four terabyte drive, but better. It's only gonna set you back a cool $1,300. And waiting to play Halo Infinite, it's only gonna set you back a cool year because 343 Industries coming out and saying that it's getting rescheduled for fall 2021 with it likely being a holiday release for 2021, which is just rough. This was supposed to be a launch game on the Xbox Series consoles. Oof, a whole year delay. I wonder if this has anything to do with the gameplay reaction when everybody saw it on the Xbox day and they were just like, did you forget to add textures? 
because you know it looks like a blank wall in unity it's not the only microsoft announcement we got apparently xbox cloud gaming is coming to the ios and windows application platforms why would i say it like that what's wrong with me x cloud coming out 15 dollars a month part of game pass ultimate going to be on pc and ios so that you can stream games from in wherever and it's I, microsoft's doing this right i can they're definitely doing the cloud streaming game thing right more game stuff, Minecraft Ray Tracing is now available to all people. Previously it was in beta, but now you can get it in case you have an RTX card and you want to show it off. Spider-Man Miles Morales is adding 60 FPS ray tracing performance mode on the game with a new update that came out from Insomniac Games, which is actually really nice because that was probably my biggest gripe with the performance ray tracing split up on the Spider-Man games is that it's 60 or 30 and I would like some ray tracing with the 60 and they made it happen. Insomniac Games continue to just blow me out of the water with your games because both Spider-Mans have been mwah. And TikTok's been mwah when it comes to app downloads. They've surpassed Facebook this year, apparently as the most downloaded app in the, the app store with over 130 billion downloads this year, which is weird because there's only 7 million people in the world. So how do you get even a billion downloads? I don't even understand. But Facebook losing its top status as the most downloaded app is not the only blow that came to it yesterday. The FTC and 47 states have filed an antitrust lawsuit against Facebook, partly due to the fact that Instagram and WhatsApp are part of them, with them saying that this should be found in the violation of the Clayton Act. The cases were filed in the U.S. District Court of the District of Columbia. You can check the links in the video description for all of it, but you can see many states are in on this as well as the FTC. So this is probably going to be a long, drawn out fight, and we'll have to see if this actually goes through. But breaking up Facebook into its separate parts could potentially be happening sooner rather than later. And in case you thought Apple's AirPods Max were expensive, is, is, is there is it pluralized AirPod Max or is it AirPods Max? Because that hurts me if it's pluralized. Anyways, their self-driving car likely also going to be a hefty chunk of change. But there's a new report coming out of DigiTimes saying that Apple is allegedly working with TSMC to produce their self-driving chip which would make sense because they're using TSMC to produce everything else that they're doing. So a trusted partner in that would make a whole lot of sense. However, 9to5Mac calls it a sketchy report. I would say that it's just, it's kind of, I, I would be surprised. It would be a huge news thing if they were choosing another fabrication facility. That's my perspective on it. And my perspective on the news is that it's over. I'm done. I need to get back to Cyberpunk, which I've actually been playing since yesterday, because apparently if you change your Series X console, location to be in New Zealand, you could play it all day, which I didn't play all day, but I got a couple hours. I'm working on some videos for Cyberpunk. So that being said, I uh, appreciate you and I appreciate today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Chirp. Check them out at the link in the video description. If you care about taking care of your back, stretching, which is incredibly important, even if you don't work out, just having limberness in your body, very enjoyable, okay? So stretch, number one, but then number two, maybe try it with the chirp wheel, links in the video description for that. And that's gonna wrap it up. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, get subscribed to Hot News to stay up to date on all of the tech news happening around the world, I think. Goodbye. So now let's jump it on and into what? So let now. So now let's jump it on into the in aim. I be flossing. I be flossing.